بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو سالار خان یوٹیوب چینل ان دا پریویس ویڈیو وی ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ تھرمل انسٹیبلٹی ان ان سالڈ انسولیشن واٹ واز دا کیس آئی اسکوئر آر لاس از ریز دا ٹیمپریچر وائی ڈیڈ ریز دا ٹیمپریچر بیکاز دا بیکاز دا کنڈکٹر واز ریپ بائی این انسولیٹر اینڈ واز ناٹ ڈسپیٹنگ ہیٹ سو وی ہیڈ لیکیج کرنٹ ناؤ دا انسولیٹر ریزسٹنس ووڈ ڈکریز وتھ ٹیمپریچر سو فردر انکریز آف کرنٹ سو دا کرنٹ انکریز از مینس آئی اسکوئر آر لاس از فردر انکریز ٹیمپریچر فردر انکریز ریزسٹنس فردر ڈکریز اینڈ دس از دا پازیٹیو فیڈ بیک پروسیس ایونچولی لیڈنگ ٹو دا میلٹنگ آف دا سالڈ انسولیشن اور ڈیو ٹو دا تھرمل انرجی دا الیکٹرانس ووڈ گین انرجی اینڈ بیکم فری لیڈنگ ٹو اگین یو ووڈ سے کلیجن آرگنائزیشن اینڈ لیڈنگ ٹو ایونچولی لیڈنگ ٹوڈ break down in this video we talk about the breakdown mechanism of solid insulation by the erosion process erosion is what is the physical eating away of the material so we discuss that today now let me tell you first that every insulation has got some anisotropy especially when we talk about solids what is anisotropy that is the non-uniformity Now, isotropic material is a uniform material, for example, liquids where the atoms and molecules are uniformly arranged. But when we talk about solids and especially the materials over here we talk about that are processed from melt, so they've got a lot of non-uniformity, they've got a lot of and isotropy which are in the form of what which are in the form of uh, which means that it has got defects and where what are those defects so they the, why are those defects should be there because of the nature of the material right yes which means well, that if you solidify a material so somewhere the density is more somewhere the density is less and that is why right Yes, especially when it's processed from melt, from melt. For example, you've got a piece of wood or you've got this piece of white wood over here. So from outside, it's looking quite a polished surface, but you don't know what is inside of the material, right? Yes, similarly wood, similarly my insulation made of porcelain or my PVC insulation is looking quite fine, but I don't know what is inside the material. no matter so it will have defect no matter how good it is processed right yes no no material would be perfectly standard of course you would have that plus minus trans in the appropriate limits but no material is 100% perfect so every solid has got defects and those defects come in the form of what those defects come in the form of voids or cavities voids or cavities what are these so these are empty spaces right voids or cavities the next is they are in the form of micro cracks and number three is embedded particles so these are the three form of defects when we are talking about over here in the case of solid insulation the defects right yes insulation is processed from melt when we are talking about it it is in the molten state so before you solidify it we process it to purify it right we have to purify it the maximum we can 95% 98% will try our best to make it 100% we will try our best to purify it to the maximum level but still there would be some impurities left and these are what those would be in the form of those embedded particles right yes now when you have got your, pur your purification done now you have to do what you have to cool it you have to cool it from the molten state and this cooling is a very complex process of heat dissipation which means what the surface layer you know that cools down quickly whereas the material inside or the bulk material that does not cool effectively or or quickly or efficiently because it is a heat insulation as well we're talking about insulation so electrical insulation is a heat insulation as well so it will not cool down effectively and hence producing what Oh, it will produce what it means that between the interface of the soft material and the material that has hardened they produce differential thermal stresses and because of that because of that they would appear in the form of micro cracks they would appear in the form of micro cracks of course they cannot be seen with the naked eye 
right yes now what about the voids so you know you are melting a material you are solidifying it so there is a process of heat involved so there would be conversion of different phases gases would be involved gases would be formed they would evaporate but the thing is some empty spaces would be left or some air traps would be left air bubbles would be left in the form of voids or cavities now there are a hundred percent chances that you know some air bubbles would be left over there in the form of cavity or void which so so that is an empty space which is not that material it could be a gas or at least it would be an air bubble right yes now this cannot be controlled the cavities or voids must be there micro cracks for example you can control it by using a very refined cooling process a very controlled cooling process right but then again you cannot get rid of you can get rid of micro cracks but again you will not go for the nano level nano cracks would be there so anyways you can control it but not you cannot finish anything over here the embedded particles you can purify to 95 percent 98 percent 99 percent still there would be a percent of uh, you know impurities is that fine yes so if i write over here is that uh, what happens is that these are due to the impurities the, the purification process that is number one then the micro extracts are due to the differential thermal stresses between what the interface and the bulk material because some of them cools quickly the other bulk material does not and void or cavities are the air bubbles or the gas trapped inside and these this is you know uh, are not avoidable then if i talk about these defects so they are classified into harmful or harmless if i talk about the defects so some would be harmful defects and the others would be harmless defects so micro cracks and nano cracks if I'm, i cannot see it with the naked eye and then the voids as well in the imparted particles as well so you have to use a microscope but then you go to the nano level so you cannot see a microscope uh, so we have multiple imaging techniques but those are not feasible over here so we will not use them in electrical engineering world over here to see the harmful or harmless voids we use a test that is a partial discharge test so the, the 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 harmfulness or the harmlessness we see it through the partial discharges if it can sustain an amount of a partial discharge so based on that we'll decide now we have got a limit that is 0 0.01 micro 0 0.01 coulombs right uh, what do i have the value is 0 0.01 Pico coulomb, 0 0.01 pico coulomb. So, if a partial discharge activity, partial discharge activity is less than 0 0.01 pico coulomb, this is a harmless void. Whereas, if this sustains the partial discharge activity, which is greater than 0 0.01 pico coulomb, then this is a harmful void. Which means what? This is a significant size of a void. It can, you know, sustain a discharge activity you reject it at once it is not fit for use right yes the insulation you take it to the partial discharge test set you apply electrodes again this is working as a capacitor then you have what you've got your standard capacitor with you the voltage the values everything is known you compare the two results wherever you have some irregular pattern or scintillation that is you know your specimen has got a defect and if this particular figure so you reject it at once is that fine yes now how much of a voltage do you apply so you, you apply a voltage with a factor of safety of two for example you're applying it you are using this material your specimen for an 11 kV so you apply 22 kV to it normally this sort of a voltage does not occur in the system with a factor of safety two but there are some cases you know for example switching surges and lightning surges which happens to have very high voltages but the time duration for that is very small we'll see them later on 
Now the harmful you have you know uh, 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 rejected at once. The harmless you take it to the field you are using it. But this is a time taking process. What happens is that the, the, the size of the cavity enlarges and how does it happen so I will tell you. So how do the harmless void becomes a harmful void? How do a harmless void become harmful void and eventually lead to breakdown? So what happens is that now we study about the discharges. Discharge is what? Discharge. Discharge is the prop is the is the transfer of charge and through an arc. You have an arc as well, right? Yes. So transfer of charge through an arc. Now we know that there are two things involved over here and what are the two things so I've already told you a very high temperature is involved and the charge transfer is involved. Charge transfer and temperature is involved. So the transfer of charge means we are talking about a conductivity. A conductive path you could say or a conductivity you could say inside the insulation right yes let's say I talk about the char the, the, tr the temperature first let's say I talk about the temperature first the this is a piece of solid insulation you've got micro you've got this Cavities are voids, you've got these micro cracks, you've got some embedded particles. Let me take, let me talk about the temperature. And I magnify a void over here. If a discharge has occurred, which means this is a localized breakdown. In this particular piece of insulation, this particular piece of insulation has broken down. Right? Yes. So when temperature increases, over here a discharge has occurred, the temperature increases. So what happens is that heat is trapped over here. Now the heat, this heat, this discharge has got a high amount of heat so this would try to escape into the surrounding but it cannot why because around it this whole area is what is an insulation a heat insulation it cannot escape the heat is trapped inside what happens is as with the time goes on the trap the heat the amount of heat trap increases leading gradually to what leading gradually to the melting of the walls so the melting of the walls means what the melting of the walls means the enlargement of the of the what of the cavity size so if the temperature increases the heat is trapped the heat is trapped and if the temperature further increases the amount of heat increases the amount of heat increases walls of cavity starts melting the walls of the cavity starts uh, to melt isn't it like this it is now one thing you, 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 if I talk about the melting so it would change into a liquid state and further you've got heat over there so that would change into a gaseous state and the gases would evaporate through the process of diffusion. So the gas is finished but the enlarged size void remains. Cavity size enlarged. The, the walls have melted, liquid and then into gaseous phase evaporated by diffusion but you've got what you've got a large size cavity left so this is it similarly now if the cavity size has enlarged this mean what that the discharge intensity would increase the discharge intensity would increase and if the discharge intensity would increase, it would be accompanied by more higher temperatures. And more higher temperatures mean what? The amount of heat trap would be more and the walls of the cavity melting would be more. Cavity enlargement would be more. Density, the discharge intensity would further increase. This is again a loop, an infinite loop, a positive feedback process. Right? Yes. So this is called what? This is called the physical eating away of the material.
it is further increasing it is further increasing have a look this cavity right this increases over here this there increases to this value this to this value a time will come that this is one electrode this is one electrode this would bridge the entire gap between the two electrodes and the breakdown would occur the final breakdown of the material has occurred still there are a number of multiple voids you know so uh, uh, they if they increase they increase increase they nucleate together also they nucleate together as well nucleate is what the combination of one or more voids right so this i'm talking about is that the size of the cavity would increase 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 eventually it will bridge the entire gap between the electrodes and a final breakdown would occur and once the final breakdown occurs the solid insulation is not fit for use and this process that i have explained this is the process of erosion which is what which is the physical eating away of the metal and i have told you the physical eating away this nucleate that i talk about so multiple number of voids would bridge together would combine together to form a larger void so which means it would sustain a larger discharge activity and finally what would be the case the temperature would involved over here would be high and eventually leading to the breakdown this i talked about temperature now if i talk about number two is what number two is the transfer of charge so basically discharge is the transfer of charge right yes it is so what happens is when a discharge occurs, this is the flow of electrons this is the flow of electrons so let's say the electrons penetrate inside the material but how far it will penetrate so it depends so let's suppose an electron is ejected from here and what happens is that it resides over here this is a negative charge leaving behind a positive charge over here right isn't it like this it is it it, it it could go in that micro crack channel or it could be you know spaced in any of the voids leaving behind a positive charge over here in your cavity now what happens is there are forces of attraction between the positive and the negative charges so let's say if i talk about it let's say the distance is 0 0.0 0 0.1 nanometer 0.1 nanometer and uh, and 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 so if i talk about the force of attraction between them forces which is directly proportional to the product of the two q1 q2 by r square isn't it like this it is so q1 is in the form of 10 to the power negative 12 q2 is 10 to the power negative 12 r is 10 to the power negative 12 or negative 9 whatever it is a very small distance and you have got uh, an epsilon naught term over here as well whatever it is do the calculations uh, uh, so you've got a square on the r as well you've got a square on the r as well a 10 to the power negative 12 for the epsilon naught so what i mean to say at the, is that this is let's suppose a 10 to the power 10 newton of a force which i am trying to make a point is that this is a very huge amount of force and these two charges would attract each other would attract each other and combine leaving behind a conducting path leaving behind a conducting path leaving behind what a conducting path and this path that i talk about this particularly we say this is called the process of tracking you have a conductive track formed by the attraction of the two charges now you have you have another you have another void over here where discharge activity has occurred so this is another electron and this another conducting path is formed this is another track formed but these tracks from the observations from the books you have got what you've got they are fine channels they are fine channels and they are in the form of what they are in the form of trees and that process this process then is called the process of tree this process is called the process of tree why because they are in the form of fine channels in the form of a tree type structure tracking was the formation of that conductive path by the attraction of the two oppositely charged cha opposite charges formed
So for the tree have a look, you've got a certain, you, you see the branches are coming out of the trunk, right? So you've got fine channels, the branches are there, right? Yes, so they are in the form of very fine channel. It branches out because of the non-uniformity of the material itself. These branches spread within the dielectric material and then you've got different types of trees. You have branch type trees, you've got bush type they are further they are written in the book now uh, sometimes the color is involved as well over here uh, for instance they are used in underground cables so uh, the 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 sand has got different types of materials so uh, those different compounds when are absorbed with the moisture so these fine channels come in the form of colors for example yellowish orange is for chromium I believe then you've got red for sulfur or whatever the colors are there so you can see that which material is in the ground present under the ground deteriorating these properties right yes the micro cracks again play the same role as they uh, as the cavity because again it is a sort of a hollowness inside the material right so the same activity will take place as we talked about cavity and the crack will keep on propagating inside the material we talked about the enlargement of the cavity over here similarly the micro crack again will keep on propagating it will keep on elongating inside the material so elongating of the track or the crack propagation and eventually it will a time will come that it has so much elongated that it will bridge the contacts between the two electrodes and the final breakdown has occurred is that fine it is so i believe that is all about the solid insulation that i had with myself uh, the process of erosion tracking and treeing so tracking and treeing we did not put so much light on was because this is not a subject of high voltage so you see it in detail in the high voltage but over here the main process we need to understand through a partial discharge test what do you have uh, 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 a certain value is given if it sustains that value it is you know harmful if it's less than that it's harmless so harmless use it but you know this is a time taking process this is a very long process we talked about it in the graph we talked about it in the graph it was somewhere over here so have a look this can then occur at a very low voltage but the time taken is very large the time taken is in years 10 years 20 years 30 years maybe you do not find any problem throughout the service life of the material but still okay so this is a very time taking process the discharge so you have a temperature the temperature would increase so it would the heat would be trapped it would melt the uh, the the walls of the cavity the the size of the cavity would increase so the discharge activity would be more further melting further cavity size enlargement eventually a time would come that the gap is bridged similarly for the charge transfer so you have a positive charge you have a negative charge the distance is very small the force of attraction is very large they combine together leaving behind a conductive path and that is called track then they are in the form of fine channels and appear as a tree like structure it has got a trunk it has got bushes it has got branches you know propagating everywhere we call it tree similarly for the micro cracks they will you know do what they will keep on elongating keep on propagating inside the material eventually leading to the bridging of the contacts the electrode and finally leading towards the final break down but again this the most important point is that this is a time taking process will take a lot of time years in years okay yes so i believe that i finish this video over here i finished this video over here i don't have anything else to tell you i'll see you in the next video maybe with some examples maybe with some examples we we try to just wind up the solid insulation till then take care of yourself everyone around you do remember me in your prayers do subscribe to the channel goodbye